show, but just to record it. Yeah. So. Well, whatever. It's recording now, so Anyways. that's fine. Anyways. Anyways, what's up, guys? What's going on? Welcome what's back up? to the Nut Up Show, and be thankful you weren't here for whatever we were just talking about because <laughs> it was kind of crazy. Just um, just all that craziness in the world. Stuff's going on. It's all in flames, but it's fine. Well, that's fine. Everything's it's fine. fine. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's okay. <laughs> these uh, these flames are great. Yeah, that's that's good. It's good. All right then. Anyways, so, so that's it for today's show. Uh, oh, I squeaked really high. <laughs> going uh, at time of the little falsetto there. I was gonna say time of the month, but it's just time of the <laughs> podcast. The, the no, no, the what is it? Uh, puberty. That's it. It's just. Uh, Going through that growth spurt, I guess. Um, All right. Anyways. um, Cool. Yeah. I don't even know what we're doing. So today we're talking about, (laughs) that was actually a really good segue in. We're talking about, (laughs) well, not the voice cracking, but (laughs) we're talking about good. Right. Right. Yes. Right. The word good. Yep. So we are well i don't know i don't know maybe not you but i am a, a jocko wilnick super fan um, yeah you need to back up a little bit <laughs> and uh tone it down i have a small obsession with navy seals uh, uh, he is married by the way and so are you <laughs> just to put that in perspective uh no but like i've said before i think why i'm so drawn to all the different navy seal podcasts is because it's the ethos right it's this it's the same like nut up ethos like right. it's you know you you have to get the job done if you are like David Goggins and you're running on a broken leg. It doesn't matter. You right. gotta get you your just shit gotta done. do what you gotta do. You gotta to, do. Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. So maybe we should just back up just real quick and offer a very quick introduction if people don't know who um, Jocko, Jocko Wilnick. Wilnick is that how you pronounce his name? Yeah, Wilnick. Yeah. yeah. So maybe you can since yeah. you know him so well. So <laughs> the first time I saw, I think you actually introduced him to me. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah. So he's he had um this amazing TED talk, I'm pretty sure it went viral and it was just about taking um, extreme ownership. And so he tells a story about um, a friendly fire incident when he was the leader in, um, I think it was Iraq and um, people died and got injured and he was the leader and he just talked about like, instead of blaming it on everybody else and well, you did this and you didn't do this. He's like, no, it's like, it's all me. It's all my fault. I did it. And but this is how we move forward and this is how we right. avoid Offering having this solutions. situation again. Exactly, but it's extreme ownership. And so um, he actually wrote a book called Extreme Ownership. And so that's kind of how he pivoted out of the military was then to create this company called Echelon Front. And they just kind of consult with businesses about leadership. And that's right. the whole thing is about leadership and what it means to be a good leader and then making each of your team members leaders for whatever they're doing. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. And actually that kind of leads me to another really great book that's really similar that I've read a couple of times and I own called The Leader in Me. And mm-hmm. it's for schools about which, you know, even in your home school, you can use it. But it's basically making kids a leader and responsible for things because it builds confidence right. and ownership and that sort of thing. So anyways, so right. he, it's so important. And it's one of yeah. the things that one of the things there's so many things that aren't taught in school, but that's a great thing that's never taught in school. You're not you've taught to be a leader. You're just taught to just shut up and just listen to the teacher. Right. Yeah. And do what you're when told. do you have yeah when do you actually get a chance to provide to, to practice any kind of leadership skills yeah maybe if you're like a captain of a sports team or something like that right but other than that but if you're one of the nerds you're never the ca- like yeah or ca- even the captain. captain of the debate team or the chess team i don't know they, they have captains I'm don't still they? like low on the nerd rung well i don't know <laughs> you were in band does, does band have a captain well, you have like first flu, but I, I just was never good enough to be. All right. So <laughs> you gotta either lead, follow, or get out of the way. <laughs> I just get out of the way. Just play the damn song. Just shut up and play the song. Play the damn song. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how ba- it's band Bandcamp. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> so he also has a really great podcast where he, inter- where he interviews some really awesome people. And he's been on Rogan and he's been on a bunch of other podcasts. Right. So maybe you'll come on our podcast one of these God, days. I think we'll call I'm, him. We'll ask him. See if I come would on. fangirl so hard. All right, just call. I wouldn't down. even be able to make to like do it. Yeah. Anyways, I don't even want to know what that means. I wouldn't be able to even speak. I'd be so oh, excited you'd be to fine. meet him. You'd be fine. I would be. Um. So he has this amazing video because they'll they'll take like kind of clips, obviously, from the podcast. And so he had this video, and you were the one that. Sh- 
told me you need to watch this. Mm. And the video is called Good. And right. Okay. Also, what you need to know about this guy is his voice is like, he's like a James Earl Jones voiceover. It's like very distinctive and you hear it and you're just kind of like, sir, yes, sir. Right. Like you're going to yeah. do what he says. Um, so he and it's a really short video clip. Like, what is it? I, I have no idea. I don't remember at all. It's I don't been, remember at all. It's been a long time. So since it's like seven it. minutes and he's saying like, good, like, you know, we didn't, we didn't get the supply. Like, you know, he's like my second in command would come up and like, Oh, we didn't get the, our second, like our, all the supplies we need for this mission. And Jock would be like, good. Yeah. And but there was other things too. Like I think people could relate to. It's like, you know, Oh, you know, like your wife left you, you know, good. good. Or like, you know, you lost your job. Well, good. good. You know? And, um, yeah. Yeah. And, and the point of this, I don't know, sorry if I'm going to yeah, no, interject no, here, ahead, but ahead, the, the point of what he's saying is that you take, anything bad that happens to you like of course losing your job that's a horrible thing but he says good because it actually provides you an opportunity yes. to excel at an avenue which you would never have thought possible yes well and it's like looking at reframing it exactly and i think that's one thing within my coaching practice is there's no failure only feedback and so yep. that's what you have to look at it. You have to look at it as that as opportunity and be just like, okay, cool, challenge accepted. Like let's let's do this thing. Yep. And um yeah, and so and then the other thing he says is like if you can say the word good, it means you're still alive. So the worst hasn't happened. Yeah. So you say any word. You're still alive. <laughs> you're still alive, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and he says like reload, recalibrate and reengage. And that's what you have to do. So, yeah. Yep. So, and, and then we've gone through. And I think the moment when you showed me that video, we were in a pretty shit place. Were we? When was it? It was in Martindale. Oh, that was fine. We had no problems in Martindale. Well, there, at the beginning, it was pretty rough. No, it was before we got there. Once we got there, I was like, we're fine. Uh, no. It was <laughs> Yeah, there was a couple times that when, yeah. Oh, yeah, there was one time. <laughs> that was a one time you was. It was one time. <laughs> but yeah, but that was okay. We but dealt then, with that. It was only like a week. Yeah, but then you 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 did this amazing because you're an incredible artist. But you and I should have brought it with me. But you you did like a a sketch of the word good and it's framed and I have it. Right. I got to make some more I sketches. I think yeah, I, yeah. I think I that's what I should do with the kids. Yes. Just make sketches of like sayings or phrases yes. or whatever that are yeah. like inspirational well maya did and then put them up maya on the did one for each of us for christmas yeah i still have that i'm still waiting I, to frame that yeah actually. i'm gonna frame mine as well so yeah. but anyways but it's just like i really like that attitude and that ethos and i think it's right. part of what 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 nut up is as well right right yeah so uh, i'm trying to think so what would you say would be times in our lives where we've were confronted with a situation and that it came into play or maybe that it didn't come into play oh god uh, like where did you, where would you like me to where, start well i guess i'll say well, I, have a, I have a couple I have a okay couple, but go well ahead, go i was ahead. just going to start with uh in terms of resilience and i i think it would be we i think we got really good at this during summer of 2018 oh, yeah. when, when we did our trip <laughs> so so if you haven't heard before um <laughs> in, there's a couple of videos yeah there's a few videos but in 2017 we decided that we were going to 2018 well but 2017 oh, okay. right because 2018 sure. was the summer we left but yeah, we yeah, decided yeah. even yeah, before yeah. christmas or whatever yeah, yeah. i don't know when it was but yeah, we yeah. decided okay how about the dates here let me finish it my doesn't door. matter it doesn't matter so we decided that it would be a good idea to basically sell pretty much everything that we owned. Mm -hmm. um, the, of course, but this was to help us like finance our actual trip because we didn't have the money for it. But mm -hmm. to sell everything we own, get some money, and spend the year traveling across Canada over the summer, going from east coast to west coast. Mm -hmm. And then in the wintertime, going down all the way down the west coast of the States, all the way back up to... Yep the East coast and come right back up to like Nova Scotia or whatever mm -hmm. in the span of, you know, like 12 months or whatever. That was, um, that What's was the plan. plan. And we decided that we would go basically in tents. We would do tent camping mm -hmm. and we would find, you know, um, what's it called? Like 
back like, like country, yeah, back roads, lands. crown lands, national forests, or whatever. Because yeah, yeah. there's lots of those things around, yep. and just spend our time kind of camping there and just visiting different different places. So yep. that was the plan, and it was it was a decent plan. But anyways, we obviously came through lots of unforeseen problems, mm-hmm. um, which I guess would happen in something like this. Yeah. But some of them were the biggest one, I guess you could say, was. That we got, you know, caught in this really bad thunderstorm. We decided that we were going to buy well, an RV. Yeah, and like, like we said, like people can go back and watch the videos because right. we need to go into granular detail. Oh, no, uh, yeah. But the basic, the basic, like <laughs> this is where Tristan gets his problem with being able to summarize things. Well, no, I'm just providing context because I'm not going to say like, do you want to listen know. to this podcast we're talking about right now? I'm not go watch this video. No, but then anyway, come back. But anyways, what happened was is we wanted to the tents weren't working out so well they were we wanted to get a trailer and the trailer we ended up buying we just made a, ba- a lot of bad decisions in buying this trailer like 10 in a row and like all like of them five seconds. and then this trailer ended up being just a hunk of shit and then the people the mechanics ended up being hunks of well shit. the mechanics were the bad because if they would have fixed it for the price that they would have it would have been yeah, fine. Yeah, so we just kept getting fucked over, and then we had to. Yeah. Then we just canceled the trip, and. Well, not. Well, not right no, away, whoa, 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 but event- yeah. eventually, and so, then we had to, you know, rebuy all of our all stuff, right. find a place to live. You're going way farther it than the story, be, but that's not that's not the yeah, point. Yeah, that's okay. not where I want to go. Okay, Forget no, what you just okay. said. So the point <laughs> was, is we buy this trailer, and we have all these different bad things happen to us, where the guy who sold it to us lied about the extent of the damage. Um, the mechanic who we gave money to took our money and ran and closed up shop and didn't pay back. So we couldn't, <laughs> I can't believe, I'm you know, so it. that we, we couldn't actually get it fixed and on the road. Yeah. So we lost money there. Mm-hmm. Um, the person that bought it from us oh God, I ended up saying that it was like going to jump off tower oh God, and then I you didn't pay that. us for that. Oh, blocked that out. So we had all this stuff happen to us oh and we could have easily been in the state of mind to saying like, you know, forget about it. This is just the worst thing ever. And just completely fold up shop and just not, you know, not be in good spirits Just be so down on yourself yeah. for making such stupid decisions, which we did make stupid decisions. Um, but instead of doing that, we were actually like, okay, well we made these bad decisions. What could we do instead to actually come out of this better off? Yeah. Right. So we obviously talked about different things that we would do if we would ever to buy an RV again or, or what have you. Um, but we also said, okay, well, how can we deal with this setback and r- go back onto our trip and make this thing work? So we did. I mean, we ended up having to, we bought the RV, then we sold it or what have you, but then we still went on to our trip and yeah, we still we carried did. on because that was kind of at the beginning of the trip. Yeah, so yeah. I, that's why I just stopped yeah, you because we didn't that's cancel. Fair. Like we still kept going for like another month or what a- or afterwards. Yeah. And then after that, it ended up being that again, we, what we did when we sold the trailer, we got a new truck or a new SUV, a new, I put that in quotes because yeah. it was it was used. And then we're not even 200 kilometers into that trip with that, going back on our trip, the transmission blew, right? And it was at this point where we're like, <laughs> we're almost stranded on the highway, whatever. We're yeah. at the point where the transmission blew. We were just laughing because, because it's like, well, you know, it's just something do? else you have to deal with, right? Yeah. This is just what, you know, other people would be, Losing their mind. Losing their mind. Devastating. There's like, yeah. you know, you know, you've seen in movies where the couple is the, the you know, the, someone's just like losing their shit. The other one's trying to come down. Well, they're like they're crying. Fighting and it's like, with each other. They're fighting because you don't know how to deal with it or whatever. Yeah. And, and yelling at the kids. Yeah, and, exactly. Right. And, and yeah. we're just like, oh, let's take it in the Canadian tire. And they're like, oh, we can't do this. So I'm like, oh, well, where else can I go? I'll drive it down the street here. It's like, is it yeah. going to even make it? I don't yeah. even know. So. And so, but I, and I think the thing is too is, is yeah number one it's not it's not to say you can't we didn't feel those feelings because i think that's important the frustration and the anger and yes the sadness like that was real and that was intense but you can't let your emotions take over and run your life you have to be able to feel them put them on lockdown and then move forward you can't you can't stay there or even get get strength from it somehow or whatever. Yeah. Cause I know for me, yeah. like it's, that stuff happened and it's like, it was almost motivation to be like, okay, well, number one, I don't want to make that happen again, but yes. how can I use this to actually yeah. get out of the situation and, and be better for it exactly. at the end of the day? So yeah, that mindset that we had, mm-hmm. uh, I think it really hardened our mind in a sense that we could handle so many different things yeah. without, you know, 
losing your shit or breaking down or whatever. Because when you're in that kind of emotional state, then you can't make decisions. You can't see things clearly. And you're, you're probably more often than not going to make even, worse even more decisions because it's going to kind of compound, right? It's just well, kind of, you hear people spiraling out of control or whatever, yeah. I mean. And I think the other thing too is we had two kids watching us very closely. And so you have to be able to model that behavior so that they see shit can happen to you and life can really kick you in the ass. But you have to be the hero of your own story and you can choose. You can be the, and I say this to the kids all the time, you can be the hero or you can be the victim. Victim has no control over what's happening to them, but a hero does. Yep. So that's what. Yep. hundred so percent. I mean, I don't know if the fact that they're, they're watching is, I mean, there's so many people that just do whatever in front of their own kids. So yeah, I don't know if that'll, that'll motivate them either. Like, a, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think, I'm, I guess I'm always just very aware that oh, for us, they're yeah. modeling our behavior and that what yeah. we do a hundred percent affects them. And even when you think they're not watching, they're watching well, of course. all the time. They're watching and absorbing things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I mean, if you can use that as an extra Boost. motivation to not lose your shit, um, yeah. then, then so be it, you know, be yeah. that, that role parent and yeah. that role model for, for the kids and, yeah. and, and how to deal with, with difficult situations. Because listen, everyone has difficult situations that come. I mean, this pandemic mm-hmm. that has happened. I mean, I mean, I don't want to go so far as it, there's a pandemic. Good. You know, that's a little bit kind of crazy, but well, of course you could put it in the, Oh, so you're stuck at home and you can't do anything. Okay, good. Now let's work on a skill or yeah. something that you've never maybe had the chance to do. do. Yeah. Oh, so you're at home. Okay. Well then maybe now I'm going to pick up that instrument that I've never mm-hmm. had, or I'm going to start writing that story that I've always wanted to write. Best shape of my life. Yeah, but again, the best shape. Yeah. So those, all those kinds of things to work, to work on. And I know even for me, like I even have problems with that. I mean, it's a constant thing that you need to battle with. Um, I've always, I've been roller coastering, roller coastering up and down with, with my weight for the longest time, probably since university. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's just, I don't know. You just have to figure out a way to take the positives out of the things that are, that are bad. Yeah. Um, I think for me, one of the biggest, the biggest times, and this is just, this was way before good ever came into it. But I think one of the most difficult moments was when Tristan was diagnosed with autism. And I remember we didn't have a car. We were super crazy poor because you were a grad student. And so we didn't have a car and we had to drive. We had to bike with the kids in the chariot carrier behind uh, behind you. Yeah. And that, uh, to, to grab you office. That was a far bike. It was like, a far bike. It was like an hour and a hour, hour and a half. Well, it wasn't about a little over an hour. But I remember coming out of that because he was such a jerk to like the worst. Well, and then Tristan. Yeah. Oh, it was horrible. That was one of the it worst was ever. Downs. It was rough. And so like, you know, to give context, he told us essentially that Tristan would never speak and he would always be dependent on us, always have to live with us. So I just remember on that bike home, cause I'm behind you cause you are with the kids and in front of me. And I just like, tears are streaming down my face because you're given like such a horrible diagnosis. And all I remember thinking was, fuck that guy. My kid is going to do whatever he wants, however he wants. And nothing he says is true. It was just like challenge fucking accepted. Mm -hmm. No one's get, no one gets to decide the destiny of my kid except me and him. Like I was just, it put such a fire under my ass and it was just like, good like we have this diagnosis now good now we can get the supports this kid needs good now i know what i can do but, I, but i'm like, getting scared here. but that's how on? i that's how i felt on that bike ride home i was just like so determined that this is not you don't get to dictate this right so anyways right. that was my that yep. was my big one. i mean life is filled with obstacles and curveballs mm-hmm. what are you gonna do yeah step up to the plate yeah try again or are you gonna you're gonna fold yeah not play anymore um do you have anything i have like one kind of thing to say that I sure watch yeah go, go, go ahead uh so the mic is yours the, or the floor is yours so the the one thing kind of in prep for talking about good is uh, i just kind of typed in like good i was trying to find like other stuff we could talk about right and so this one ted talk came up 
actually it's TEDx talk and it was yeah be clarified because there's a big difference yeah, between a difference. TED and TEDx so, yeah. so it was a TEDx talk <laughs> and it was this woman her name um, is Lucy Hone and um, we'll link to it in the show notes for sure because it's a really great talk and so she was basically I think a psychologist or a psychiatrist and and one on her whole research was on resilience and people being resilient and she studied um, like military veterans in the states and all this stuff so she thinks she knows a lot about resilience and then Mm -hmm. like literally the worst thing that could ever happen to a mother happens and her daughter is killed in a car accident and her daughter's like 12 i think so then she's like all the things like as she's studying this that happens to her and she's like all the things people would tell me or, you know, we would, were researching and people would say if something bad happens to you to try and be resilient. She's like, I didn't want to hear any of it because it was all awful. It was right. all shit. Like what? Can you give me an example? Well, just like, um, well, everything is meant to be and, you know, your grief will get better with time. And then she was even given like some really rough statistics, like most couples that lose a child end up divorced, mm-hmm. and which is also something that we heard, right? Many couples that have a kid with special needs end up divorced. Um, so she's just hearing these things. And so anyways, so she kind of comes away and the whole point of the talk is she has like three things that successful, resilient people do or think about. And so, um, the first one is exactly kind of what I said is you have a choice. You can be a victim or you can be a survivor. And so you, I think there's, those are two very different mentalities. Yep, for sure. Um, and so the one thing she said, which I think is really important is like suffering is just a part of life and it's not personal. The universe, like what happens to you is not personal. So you can say, why me? But it's not a personal thing, so you got to let that shit go. Mm. And I thought that was really, really interesting. And not to have that sense of entitlement to have this perfect Why life. do you think a lot of people think that, though? I mean, a lot of people do think that, like, oh, this is happening to me, and how come? And and I don't know if it's the, they know. think that the universe is against them, but it's almost as if it's like... People think that they're owed or whatever. Well, like, like I, yeah, I think it's I, that, actually, I don't even know how many people do think that. I don't know, but I think it's this entitlement of I should just have this easy life. And it's like, no one has an easy life, regardless. Even if you're a billionaire, there's and, still shit you gotta deal and with. And what is easy life anyways? Yeah. Like, like if you think like, okay, what's well, an easy life? Okay, well, I'm going to, you know, go down to the beach and I'm just gonna sit at the beach all the time. Okay. Yeah. And do what? Yeah. Oh, I'm just going to do nothing and just order drinks. Okay, well, how much are you going to drink and for how long? Like yeah. all day, every day? Yeah. Is that is that a good life? Is that, well, you know, like... It, yeah, well, of course. Sorry, but, I, I, but I think like for us, like, yeah, you, we could have spiraled out into that pity party of why me with the whole trailer thing. You know, why do these assholes, these... Why did these assholes sell us this trailer when they knew so much was wrong and didn't tell us? Why was this mechanic? Like, it wasn't personal. They're just bad people. They're just bad people, and we just got unlucky. Like, that's just what happened. Mm -hmm. So you can't get stuck in it. So the next thing that I think is also really great is... So are you still talking about her? Because I I do do, do have a question. Yeah, yeah, So... So she was doing research on resilience and she was saying like the research that she was doing, that she realized that it was garbage. No, no, not the research was garbage. It's what people were telling her and like the platitudes that people tell you in the hopes to help you become resilient right. and bounce back. But isn't that what it. she was researching though? I don't know specifically if that was like her research, but like people within her field, I think, yeah. the resilience field. Did so. it change how she I wonder she didn't get she, into it she does her work uh, probably I'm, I would assume it would have had to because I be, I could see that like oh all these professionals right because all, maybe all these quote unquote professionals are like oh well time heals everything yeah get, things you know, happen for a reason you know oh it's okay to cry and get well yeah, I mean, yeah. it is but you know yeah, like, yeah. deal with your feelings whatever the hell yes. they might say yes but have they really lost right what do you actually know about pain yeah and suffering so like yeah what maybe that's what she's prescribed to, but then she actually hears it's like, actually, this is bullshit advice. I think I I need to switch this whole paradigm. I need to change the paradigm paradigm. of how people study resilience because this is garbage. Anyways. But I think this is what has come of her research is these three things is to just accept that suffering is a part of life, which was number one. And then number two is most resilient people choose very carefully where they put their attention to and where they put their time to. And so one really good example was the car that her daughter was in 
it was hit by she was they were she was traveling with a friend and the friend's mother and all three of them were killed instantly but it was a drunk driver that hit the car and so she chose not to go to the trial she just it wasn't where it was going to be constructive for her to put her time and yeah. energy but her but her husband did her husband yeah. did want to go to that trial and be there so i think being able to recognize where you put your attention and energy i think that's that is really really important mm-hmm. as well um yeah it sounds like it could easily be a list of successful people that are just successful in life yeah. you know like choose where you put your energy in right like if you want to build a specific business then you put your energy towards that and you you t- you shut down all the other noise it's or shut that, out all the other noise yes, right 100%. or you know that you want to get in this the best shape of your life it's like you shut everything else out and you just focus on what you need to do and you kind of know what you need to do and it's just yeah you know it's it's yeah it's uncanny how similar how, it things is, can be right it is, it, yeah. It, yeah the other thing she mentioned within that is you know p- maybe even if you're not really sure where to kind of put your time and focus is like put it into a gratitude practice, which there's so much, it's really fascinating. There's so many amazing studies coming out about how a gratitude practice like can change the, like the structure. Can you give me an example? What do you mean by gratitude? So like, what are you, what are you grateful for? Like there's like these five minute journals that you can do and it's like you do it in the morning and it's like, what are three things you're grateful for today? And Mm. it can be like the dumbest thing. So it's like a yoga practice, but you're just like every day you're just sitting down for five minutes and what's well, the writing down what you're grateful for. Well, there's other stuff within that five minute journal, but it is the first, I think the first three are like name three things you're grateful for today. So it could be like literally the dumbest thing. Like it doesn't have to be anything big. I'm grateful that we have a salt shaker, right? Like it could be something like that. Um, and so it, then that makes you, it, it forces you to look at the positives in your life and look at what's good. And that kind of can shape the rest of your day. And then eventually the rest of your life, right? If you're a grateful person, like building habits one day. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so even like with the kids, when they were smaller and they had a hard time, if they were scared or had a bad dream or had a rough time going to sleep, I would always tell them before, like we'd talk it through and then I'd be like, okay, tell me three good things. Mm -hmm. So then it changes their mindset and it has, you fill your brain up with the good rather than the crappy and the bad. Right. So I think it's a, that was a really important piece there. That's interesting. I think that's going to be something that I'm going to start. I, I was, I was looking online at something that it was this product and it was, it had like, it's just on people's desk. It's in this nice little wood thing, but they're just cards and you take it out and then you can hang it up on the, the wood and you just write down like your to-do list. Mm-hmm. So it's like a, just a to-do list tracker, but it's like one page at a time. So you yeah, can just kind of cool. see it. So you wake yeah. up, you just write it and it's right there. So it's not even in a book. It's just, just, out, just paper. So you, yeah, yeah. so you just buy refills, I guess. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah. It actually looks really, really, cool. really, really nice. Yeah. Um, but I would like to make my own card that has the own things, right? So like you can put the gratitude on there yeah. and then the, like what your to-do list is for the day or the week yeah. or whatever you want to do. Uh, cause that's, that is a good thing of like every day going in and just writing down what you're, what you're grateful for. I, I really like that. Yeah. And then even on that card, just having like a nice quote or something like that. To well, give this you is some exactly what this five minute journal is and except right. it's in journal form, but it's the same thing. There's a quote there's, and then there's other stuff underneath it that you do too, but you probably, but it's like, obviously it's, I like the hang up though. So you can just have it in front of you all day and see. Yeah. They're just like little cards. It's like maybe a little bit bigger than a cue card. card? Yeah. Yeah, Like almost the size of a phone. Phone, Yeah. That's really cool. And then it was in like this really nice wooden case. So there's like things and then just had like a little slot. So you just slot it and just stay like this. So you just have it on your desk and you just you just have it there. It's just a piece of paper. It's right? just like reminding you all day. Yeah. yeah I should have I a look at it. That. It was really, it was like 90 bucks Jeez. just for that. And then the water refill. But I think it's because the whole thing was this really nice, nice wood thing. handcrafted yeah, piece yeah. of wood or whatever. You could probably make one. I prob- well, I don't have the tools, but yeah. Well, if you I did, could, you if could I make one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Instead of buying one for $90, it's going to cost $500 to get all the tools. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it would be really great to make one. Cool. Yeah, but I could definitely make the cards anyways because I could just print, print them myself yeah. or whatever right so yeah. um and then the, the last thing that she said was that people that are resilient ask themselves or kind of check in and be like is what you're doing and i think this can be applied to anything but is what you're doing helping or harming you mm-hmm. so is staying in the pity party helping or harming you 
right? Is going to that trial going to help you or is it going to harm you? And so I think this is something that, you know, even not necessarily with resilience, but sometimes I'll be like watching YouTube videos and like, is this helping me get towards my goals right now to be watching this? Is this bag of chips helping me towards my goals or is it not going to get me there? Right. So, so what do you do if you, if you think of that mentality, but it still doesn't get you off your ass, right? Cause you're like, Oh, I'm watching. Is this helping me? No, but I'm just going to keep doing it anyways. I think there will, I think if you even start that thought pattern, I think eventually there'll be a tipping point where you realize that I need to stop because it really is just harming me too much. Mm -hmm. But I think it's about everyone has their different spot where they get to a point where they're- Well, there is, right? Because yeah. yeah. And especially when it's something for, just take eating, for example, right? Mm -hmm. Like maybe you might feel like, oh, I'm eating, I should stop or whatever. But it's like every day, it's like overeating, overeating. And then before you know it- yeah you know, you're 200 pounds overweight or whatever. Yeah. So it's, there's like almost like little battles, but then there's yeah. also like the big the overall big battle. Overall. Yeah. yeah. So I think obviously people, I mean, that's an easy one to conceptualize. I think when you're talking about weight, but they're obviously losing the little battles, but they're also losing the big battle. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So, but then how could you bring that into other aspects of your life in terms of like, are there little battles that we're losing? but that is causing even bigger damage that we don't even don't even yeah. realize. I mean, probably, I probably. guess. Yep. I don't know. I'm just rambling. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to think of what you're saying here and, and how there's things in my life that I could probably stop and think about what I'm actually doing to mm -hmm. see if there's rooms room where I can improve, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I don't know. I don't know where, if you have any, if you have any thoughts or ideas as to what you might see me do, that's, counterproductive mm -hmm. then let me know i will <laughs> i usually do though yeah I usually do yeah 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 so but yeah i just thought that that was um i thought those three were great and not even just for being resilient and coming out of a really rough time but just in life in general right i think yeah um and i i think the other thing that this whole discussion kind of goes to is that I think struggle is really, really important. I think doing hard things is really, really important yep. because like, like with everything we've dealt with <laughs> within our life, like wow, anything that comes at us now, we've been through so much, we've been through so much struggle, we've been able to get through it. And so it's like anything that comes at us, like I know we're gonna have no problem. Yeah, nothing faces nothing me at all. Nothing faces Like me. if I literally lost my job, today or whatever like it wouldn't be a big deal okay it would be a big deal to me but i know that we would be able to get through but it, that's what like i mean I right so like i'm not gonna yeah. just I, I literally wouldn't see her oh why did i lose my job yeah. i'd be like okay well yeah the next day literally get back on the horse and get to work and i know exactly what i would need to do yeah to you know to remedy the situation right so it's like yeah yeah because yeah. it's happened before i i think <laughs> oh yeah god um yeah twice yeah. Twice lose, losing a job, um, unforeseen. Um, yeah. Uh, well, the first one I should have seen coming because I hated every second of that job. Um, but the second one was like totally out of the blue. Yeah, that being, was a rough you know, one. That was a rough one. Um, Tristan, yeah, Tristan was in the hospital for a month because he had pneumonia double. Well, not double pneumonia, just one pneumonia, but he had to get two surgeries. Yeah. Um, and, and then I'd started a new job. Well, and you're, <laughs> I was in... London. You were in London. We lived in Waterloo and I was working in Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> so, and if anyone's working, that's like, you know, Waterloo and Toronto is about an hour, hour and 15 minutes away, a drive. And then Waterloo to London is about an hour and a half. About an hour. About an hour. Okay. So, and then London to Toronto is about two hours. Two hours. Yeah. So, so uh, in, in terms of driving, um, but, uh, oh, we're going with this. Well, just, yeah. So, yeah. He so, 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 so yeah, he was pretty, he was, you know, I, not like he flatlined or anything like that. So I don't know how on the scale of one to 10, how was, close he was to, to, it was bad. to, to dying. Yeah. I mean, it was ambulanced and rushed and all that stuff. We were but, supposed to be helicoptered to London. Oh, really? Eh? But there was no helicopter. Right. So yeah. yeah. So I can give you an idea of how bad it was. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so all that stuff happened. And then like, you know, I went back to work and then like two weeks later, they're like, yeah, it's not working out. I'm like, oh God. Um, but it's like. Yeah. So yeah. shit happens, right? And it's like, what do you do? I mean, I felt obviously I felt 
really bad afterwards. I remember I was taking the train ride home and I was just like, oh my God, like, what the fuck? What are we going to do? And and it was uh, it was a real crazy thing too because they're like, you have to sign this papers. If you don't sign this, that you're not going to sue us. And then you're, yeah, you're so they, gonna, they knew that what they were you're doing. You're going to. What they knew what they were doing yeah, was wrong. Like if you sign this, then we'll give you your last pay. If not, you're not going to get anything. Yeah, it was it's awful. Like, it was awful. So, um, but anyway, so that was really bad. I was definitely was not resilient then because it was like, oh my goodness, this is a lot of panic. Um, yeah. But now if that happened again, it'd be, it'd be no problems. I think too, there's a fallback that we'd have money yeah. for like. Yeah. We'd probably have enough for like a year, I guess, if anything yeah, yeah. terrible, I'll, terrible well, did happen. Yeah. I mean, it's so. obviously we're in a way different position, but I think that, yeah. But the point is, is that we've going through struggle, you know, even if it's a, even if you just do little small struggles each day, like. That's, that's, what it is. that's it, how it, that's how you build it up. Like, you know, you go like yesterday, the, the day before yesterday, I walked for 40 and it just goes back to the 24 hour clone. I walked for 24 hour, or walk, sorry, you walked, sorry, for 24 hours. hours. I walked for 40 minutes and I just, cause I was rough. I was a rough feeling week this week and I just had like zero energy. But then the next day I was like, well, fuck that. I'm going to walk just five extra minutes. I'm just going to do a little bit better. And I have confidence I can do it because I did it yesterday. Yeah. So it's just even something small like that. You're going to run out of time because if you add on five minutes every day, I know. then your walks Forever. three weeks from now, I'll have to walk for 12 it. hours and 35 minutes. To, to one up my next one <laughs> by Christmas time. Well, I'm walking for 24 <laughs> hours. So I got to do better than I did yesterday. <laughs> No. So, but yeah. it's that, but it's that it builds confidence and, you know, and even as parents, as much as you want to step in and take over, it's like, no, you have to get, let them struggle through something because yeah. it's how they build confidence in themselves that they build can overcome characters. these things. No, 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 no. When you're raising kids, you just come to their every call, every time something happens, and then you make sure that they can't do anything on, on their own. You just have to get them kids having trouble brushing their teeth. Well, then you run around and chase them around with a toothbrush and then you brush their teeth for them. Just do that. That's what you do with kids. No. Kids having problems in school? Well, you yeah, take the test for them. You call <laughs> the teacher. You all yell at the teacher. You yell at the teacher and then you get them yeah. to give your kid a better grade. Yeah. <laughs> and then you do your kid's homework. Mm. You do all that kind of stuff. Mm. Kids have a job interview? Well, you go talk to the employer. <laughs> you tell them why your kid needs to have a job. Mm. Anyways, that's not true. I'm not being serious <laughs> at all. <laughs> uh, just my little take on a lot of uh, parents doing a little bit too much when they're they raising their parents. A snow plow parent. Yeah, I mean, they mean well, right? But then it's of like course. if your kid can't defend for themselves or do anything, then what the that's hell are right. you raising them to, to be? Yeah. You know, do you want them to be dependent on you all the time? Call you every time they, they, they have a problem? Mm-hmm. That's not cool. No. You don't want that. Maybe you do. I don't know. 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 understand. Anyways. That uh, that parenting philosophy. Mm-hmm. The point is, is struggle is good. Struggle is good. How would you recommend someone try to bring some struggle into their life? It's a really good question. Like I said, just anything that makes you uncomfortable, like maybe move towards that. Mm. And just give yourself really small things each day. It doesn't have to be big. It can just be like a something really tiny. Like challenge yourself. What is challenging to you? You know, do you want to learn a new language? Like do a little bit of Duolingo or whatever every day. Just a little bit. Just challenge yourself a little bit to learn more. Or, you know, you want, you want to learn something just do a little bit every day and then build up over time. Just challenge is it yourself. also if you're learning something, but to challenge yourself in how you're learning as well too? Because for example, if you're learning an instrument, mm-hmm. you know, you could play the same notes over and over again, but maybe you're not really challenging yourself, trying well, to learn maybe a more difficult well, piece. Well, that's the point is, yeah, you get a book that progresses you from beginner to intermediate and you just do a little bit each day and you practice and a little bit harder each yeah. day. It sounds very much just like more of a, like a, like a habit thing. Um, but I guess habits are challenging as well too to try to build well, that. Yeah, 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. Yeah, but that's, you just add a, add a little bit, little yep. little bit each day. Yeah, you, you want to get, you want to eat better. You don't have to eat 
like super crazy every single day, all day. Just add add in like an extra vegetable each day. Yeah. Just add like something pretty simple. Yeah. Right? So so going back to good and the, the whole point of you know, I guess I don't know the title of this this episode. Um, so would that stuff doing that would that help you become more resilient if something does happen that is catastrophic? In you, at least in, in, in your life or that you would have normally assumed it's catastrophic, but maybe, you know, mm, I like think what can you do to be, to be good? <laughs> I don't know. Well, no, like rather than like having catastrophic shit happen in your life. Yeah. Right? Cause no, it's going to, it's going to happen. Right. So how, I, what can you do to make sure that it, when it does, when the shit does hit the fan, that you're the, the most adequately, able to, to deal yeah. with it or capable. I don't know. I think it's just incorporating those little struggles into your life every day, because if right. you incorporate little struggles, it's going to build, it's going to build that confidence. And those neural pathways of yeah. connection of like, you know what? Yeah, this yeah. is a problem, but I can, I can, I've, I I've, can I've, I've, I've had, hard, I've, I've had hard problems. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I, so I think that's, that's, how, that's how you do it is it, just a little bit every day. And maybe also the problem isn't as bad as it might've been because you've been challenging yourself every day. This reminds me actually of, um, what's the guy's book? What's the guy has been in space? Chris Hadfield. Oh, yeah, his book, his book what's his book called? Do you even remember? An Astronaut's Guide to Life on Earth. Right. Yeah. I, I remember what he talks about. And it's kind of along the same veins in terms of challenging yourself, whatever. But he's just like, you have to plan for like everything. everything. And, but not only do you plan for it, you actually visualize it and you go through the motions of yes. like how you would actually deal Such with it. A good point. So by the time when something really bad happens, it's like you've run over it so many times, you're just on autopilot. It's automatic, yeah. yeah. So that's kind of almost along the same, it's not in the same lines of good, oh, like Chris Hadfield, like the whole thing when he was like blinded in space. You're not like, good, I can't see it, <laughs> I'm in space. It's like, whoa. Damn. But you you're still in that state where you've trained and you've worked so much that yeah. if something catastrophic happens, like you can't see in space, mm -hmm. you're still super calm. Your blood pressure doesn't even rise or whatever. Yeah. You just, you just deal with it. Yeah. So maybe that's a good thing to put onto that. It's like, yes, you want to be resilient, but how can you be resilient? Maybe you can do that by putting yourself through the, well, what happens if I did lose my job? Yeah. What would I do? 100%. What would happen if, I got really sick and you know, this happened or what would happen if, yeah, I don't know. Right. Like yeah. think of whatever situation your I, life is in and then think of like the worst situation that can happen. Pretend that that actually happens and actually go through the motions of solving that problem or how you would actually try to deal with it. Yeah. And I think what's difficult, what I think can be difficult about that is being, being able to be very removed from it and not have an emotion with it or not having as yeah. much emotion. Be because very stoic. That's, yeah, that's what's difficult. I think, yeah, that's another good thing is, you know, researching or reading the stoic stuff because they're, that's the basis of things is really to be calm right. and be the calm center of the hurricane no matter what's happening. It's like what you can control is, yeah. is internal. Well, and I think like that's what it, that's what it comes down to. There's spheres of control in your life. There's things you can control and then there's those that you can't and everything outside of your sphere of control, you have to let it go. Yeah. Um, I think, I think the other thing, um, it's interesting to learn about how we use our brains. And I did one of these, well, I don't really use mine. So <laughs> I, I did one of these curriculums with the kids. It's a mind up. It's called mind up. And, um, it, it's very like bit kid. It's bleh. It's, it's bleh. bleh. It's bleh. Yeah, it's gross. It's, uh, it's really, it's for kids. And so it explains kind of how the brain works and how there's basically kind of, they break it down to like three very simple sections of the brain. The one is the hippocampus where it's all your memories. Mm -hmm. The other one is the prefrontal cortex, which is like your higher thinking skills. That's what they would take out when you'd have a lobotomy back in the day. I don't know. I think it was always at the yeah. front. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. And then the other one is the amygdala, which is your fight or flight. So, um, the whole point of it. And then I put it into star Wars terms for Tristan. I was like mm -hmm. your hippocampus, your memory is like R2. 
Um, the amygdala is like Anakin. That guy yeah. flies off the fucking handle. <laughs> Sand everywhere. <laughs> and then um, Yoda is your prefrontal cortex. And so you put it in terms like that. You're like, okay, well, who do you want in control of that motherfucker? Like, you don't want Anakin in control of your yeah. decisions because he's crazy. Only in like, you know, life or death situations do you want to use him, right? Yeah. But you want to use Yoda. And that's what I always, we always kind of say is, well, you need to use Yoda. You need to slow down, take a deep breath. Because then that helps reset what you're thinking about. And yep. then you can use that Yoda, that calm brain. Yep. And so I think that's part of it too, is being, is even just knowing. That's really the stoic philosophy. Yeah, yeah. It's just even knowing how your brain works and then how to hack it. So you can reset and use that prefrontal cortex. So yep. when you're dealing with shit. So, because it's hard because sometimes it's you, really hard. You, no one masters it. I mean, no. well, and I think that's the thing is that, you know, we talk about too, it's about being proactive rather than reactive. So the Chris Hadfield example is perfect is planning for things and thinking about things yep. and then testing yourself using small little struggles in your daily life yep. Yeah, to build the confidence. Yep. So, yeah. Yep. I mean, that's what that's, it's basically training is, yeah. is what it is. hundred you know? percent. hundred percent. Like when you're training with, for Muay Thai, um, you're not going to get steel shins or steel elbows right away. You know, you're banging the bag over and over again, building those hard, hard bones. Yeah. Uh, it's training. So instead of training your bones for, for Muay Thai, you're training your mind for yep. whatever may come in the future. Right. Getting, yep. it, getting it hard. <laughs> Sorry. That's what, she, uh, that's what she said. No, easy now. Always <laughs> goes back down there, doesn't it? But that's what Goggins always says, right? He's, um, what does he always say? He's like callousing. Callous, callousing callous your mind. Sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. just, um, yeah, beating it up and then, it, I don't know. You just, you just, uh, what we're talking about, you're just, you're just resilient. So there's, there's lots of strategies. And I think, I mean, we talk about this too, but I am certainly not the best at this. And I need to really look at these strategies and how I can better better in my life and uh i'm really hoping that within a year or two i'll really really have things nailed down so mm -hmm. um but i think it's it's a pr it's something it's always a problem oh, for sure you that's right it's not two years i'm going to be at the end but it's yeah i think that i'll see some hopefully really really good results yeah um after a couple of years of really mindfully trying to do this like i think like i'm really going to take your um your advice there on uh, the, the gratitude and mm -hmm. do that every day and start with that. That's awesome. I think that's a really good thing. Yeah. Because, yeah, it's one thing that it's really hard to overlook because it's easy to be like, oh, uh, I didn't do this or I didn't get this done or oh, I got to do this and this person is at work is bothering me, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But it's not thinking of like, oh, well, I'm super healthy and I'm, you know, I have a wonderful family or whatever, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's always good to, to take a step back and like focus on the positive. Yeah. Especially like us, like we're living here in Canada and even though Canada's crazy, but <laughs> it's still like, it's pretty good, you know, like it's better than some places. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Cool. Anyways. Well, good. good. So that's, uh, that's that. I think, uh, I think so. Is there anything else you want to add? Anything else you want to say to the beautiful people listening? No. Or watching? No, I don't. That's about it. That's about it. That's about it. Well, thank you so much for watching for or watching. listening. Thanks for listening. However, however you are um, consuming your media, engaging <laughs> in us, <laughs> our tickling news, tickling news. <laughs> That's gross. <laughs> so come, come Anyways. <laughs> Anyways, so at that, I will say thank you for listening, watching, Absolutely. and have yourself a good <laughs> week. Not up. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.